Hi everyone, I'm back and I'm in the exact same position I was in last time I filmed. Somebody actually wrote me and they're like, why do you always film with the kitchen behind you? And the truth is because the light is right over there. When the light hits you, you get that light situation. So today on our IVF journey, <clears throat> excuse me, I'm still going through puberty. We are going to be meeting with an anesthesiologist and basically the doctor that performs the actual procedure is really the technician. So you obviously want somebody who's extremely skilled at that. But from what I've learned, the anesthesiologist is really the most important person in the equation with regard to health. Because that's the person putting you to sleep and that's the person you hope is gonna be waking you up. <laughs> so it was very important for me to meet with the anesthesiologist and fortunately they have made this happen. So we're going in today to meet with him. I'm gonna try to film as much as I can. It's possible that I won't be able to film anything. My goal today is to really understand the procedure. I have like a series of 20 questions I'm gonna be asking and what I'll do is I'll get the info. If I cannot film anything, then I will come home and I will let you guys know what my questions were and I will let you guys know what the answers are. Ow, it's hurting my shoulder. So that essentially it feels like you guys came with me. Uh, I hope this information is relevant and helpful. If you may be going through the same thing, it's like a commercial for IVF. <laughs> Total side note, my new food right now is raw organic chia seeds. I've eaten these before, but I'm like going on a rampage right now. And they're a great source of omega-3 fatty acids. I don't get a lot of omega-3s because I don't take fish oil and I'm eating a plant-based diet, so it's hard to get omega-3. So this is one of the ways that I do it. There it is, can you see? Probably not, because my camera doesn't know how to focus, focus, focus. Stairs, stairs, stairs. We're in the waiting room and there's many safe. Okay, we just had literally the greatest meeting that you can have ever. I just highly, highly, highly suggest that if you're gonna go through this process and you're able to meet with the anesthesiologist, go for it because, I mean, I hope everything goes well, but at least I feel like it will. <laughs> Don't you? Oh, it was great. It was great, it was great. Hi everyone, we're currently at R1. We're about to get dinner. Uh, this is my favorite place on earth. It's pretty much where I eat all the time or where I get my food from. Tonight we're gonna have Quinoa vegetables with a collard green wrap. Dave is gonna add bison to that because he is not eating a plant-based diet. I am, so I will have no bison. I will just look at it and dream of the day when I can. Hi! <laughs> What's currently in my juice, this green juice you see here, is kale, spinach, celery, cucumber, parsley, a lemon, and cayenne pepper. I believe in this very much. I drink as many of these as I possibly can because this is literally my medicine. <sighs> Vegetables help our bodies create nitric oxide. And nitric oxide is exactly what we need to help dilate the arteries. Nitric oxide in a cup. That wonderful musical melody you hear in the background, it's called No Seatbelt. I'm sitting on my bed hoping that this tripod that I've created is not gonna topple over. Essentially, you're on like five books and a little box. I wanted to share some of the answers I got today from the anesthesiologist because it was very interesting. He just made me feel so much more comfortable about this whole thing and just a really, really nice person. The length of the procedure is about 20 minutes. I'm gonna be given twilight, so I'm gonna be in kind of this half asleep, half awake mode, so it's not full on general anesthesia. They're gonna be giving me the least amount of estrogen possible because of the pulmonary hypertension, because estrogen is of course a very tricky thing with regard to fluid shifts in the body and all sorts of things like that. So the estrogen element is of course the scariest element I think of the whole thing, and that was what I learned today, that it's essentially less about the anesthesia than it is about the actual estrogen, which again, you're getting for I think it's like 10 or 11 days, followed by like one day where they like blast you with it and then they extract the eggs. So that's that, let me see what else I asked. Um, so this particular doctor has experience with pH patients, not for egg extraction, but he's worked with a lot of pH patients in the actual hospital, he's, he's at UCLA. So I'm glad that he has obviously experience with pH patients, that's a very big deal. So basically he's gonna be going very slowly, he said very, very, very slowly. I have a very strong reaction to anesthesia in general. I get very nauseous and very sick. 
So he's going to be giving me Zofrin, a little bit of Zofrin, which is an anti-nausea. He's going to be adding that into my magical potion so that hopefully I can wake up and not feel like the end of the world has just hit me over the head. The big thing was I wanted him to understand that during my catheterization, I went into pulmonary edema with the administration of nitric oxide. And this is why they diagnosed me with pulmonary veno-occlusive disease in addition to pulmonary retention. This, of course, is a very important thing, so I needed him to know this. So I shared every single thing I possibly could have. He's very thorough. He wanted a ton of information. So I'm still nervous, for sure, but he definitely made me feel so much better. I think that in general, just because there's so many unknowns with regard to all this, it's going to be a little scary all the way through. You know, I asked, can I, once I start the estrogen, if I don't feel well, can I just get off it? And the answer is yes. Um, so obviously if, the, if I begin taking the estrogen and my heart starts to react in a very unhappy way, then I'm gonna stop the entire thing. My mother's gonna fly in from New York to be with me when I do this. She's gonna be here just to monitor me and make sure that I stay alive. And Dave will be here at night so that he can make sure I stay alive at night. So I have a lot of people trying to keep me alive, which is very, very good. Thank you for watching. Thank you for coming along with me on this IVF journey. And I will see you very soon. <sighs> Food I didn't cook. Bison, which I'm not eating, but I'm just going to look at. Collard greens right here. There's the chef and the flesh. Ooh. He's so tall that all you see is my head. You put these vegetables into the collard greens. I'm going to add some quinoa to the collard greens. Then you just make a little collard green smush and then you cut it and then you eat it.